myself dr chaitali mitra from swami sirupanan mahavidyalaya today's topic is immunity to infection it is a part of bsc third curriculum of paper immunology unit 4 and topic 3 here are the contents uh, first is what is infection what are pathogens immunity against parasite for example malaria life cycle of malarial parasites immunological process that occur during pathogenic activity immune response against pathogen diagnosis and treatment next was immunity against bacteria for example tuberculosis disease in this we study steps of bacterial infection structure of tuberculin in which during even during infection immune response of host diagnosis and control treatment immune response to fungi for example aspergillosis disease in this infection causing common aspergillosis species aspergillosis and its type symptom and diagnosis immune response of host and treatment immune response to viruses for example hiv in this we study about what are hiv the source of infection causes of infection pathogenesis of hiv infection phases of hiv infection escape mechanism of virus symptoms spectrum of hiv complications immune response to hiv types of test for hiv laboratory diagnosis treatment and art therapy so start with first that is what is infection an infection is basically refers to invasion of harmful microorganism into the body causing diseases what are different system then defense systems are of three types there are mechanical barriers chemical barriers and cells which act against pathogens mechanical barriers are skin and hair chemical bar- barriers are mucus and stomach acids cells are phagocytic cells and antibodies which are produced inside our body so here in this slide we can see what are pathogen and how many types of pathogen normally we encounter so pathogens are normally of four types they may be bacteria virus fungi or protozoans a pathogen can be defined as an organism causing disease to its host with the severity of disease symptom referred as viral pathogens are taxonomically widely diverse and comprises of virus and bacteria as well as unicellular and multicellular eukaryotes every living organism is affected by pathogen including bacteria which are targeted by specialized virus called phages now we see immunity against parasite in this we study about anopheles mosquito which causes malaria disease malaria is basically a fever caused by protozoan parasite called plasmodium it is transmitted by female anopheles mosquito it completes its cycle in man and female anopheles mosquito plasmodium provides escape mechanism by hiding inside rbc for liver to avoid action of antibody bodies it also produces antigenic growth by bearing antigens hemozoin produced by plasmodium results in immunosuppression this is life cycle of malarial parasite here we can see mosquito that transmits in uh, transmits inside human spore firstly sporozoite center and infect hepatocytes mitotic replication occurs liver cell structure and mirozoites are released 
their sexual cycle cycle completes and produce gametophytes then again it enters the cycle and transmission of mosquito ingest gametophytes via bite these gametophytes mate and undergo meiosis migrates through mid gut wall and forms oocyst and develop into sporocytes and these sporozoites then again enter the human body immunological processes driven malaria here we can see natural killer cells cd4 cells neutrophils monocytes macrophages t helper cells and t cytotoxic cells all are included during the pathological process of malaria infection immune response against pathogen this can be described as malaria in malarial immune response two type of immunity are produced first is innate immunity in which absence of ducky antigen can be seen alternations of hemoglobin can be seen like sickle cell anemia or thalassemia enzyme deficiency means deficiency of glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme and natural killer cell activations these cells proliferate and degrade plasmodium infected rbc and with the help of interleukin 8 the plasmodium infected cells get degraded acquired immunity cell mediated response antigen peptide fragment of plasmodium is deposited on the antigen presenting cells which helps t helper cells to recognize it and binds with it t helper cells kills plasmodium by releasing cytokines and tumor necrosis factor second was humoral response in this again peptide fragments are recognized by t helper cells and activation of t cell soccer thus b cells pro- proliferate and plasma cells and memory cells are secreted these cells develops into antibody and kill the plasmodium here we can see the diagnosis from how we can diagnose diagnose the malarial infection this can occur in three types first is clinical diagnosis that is characteristics and characteristic fever if fever is repeated for 3 days that is tertian malaria and it on the fourth day that is quaternal malaria and last is spleen can be seen during clinical diagnosis as rbcs are destructed during the process of malarial infection so anemia can also be noted during this through blood smears or through pathological diagnosis we can see plasmodium through blood smears for example plasmodium human plasmodium species are plasmodium vivax plasmodium ovale plasmodium villeri and plasmodium falciparum these can be observed in the blood third is serological diagnosis serological diagnosis is done where other options are not available and these are antibody detection by indirect fluorescent antibody test and elisa treatment drugs like quin daraprin chloroquine plasma quin are given for the treatment of malaria next one is immunity against bacteria in this we study about tuberculosis it is a bacteria so here are the primary states of bacterial infection bacteria attached to the host cell 
proliferation occurs invasion into host tissue and toxin induced damage are done to the host cell here is here we can see tuberculin which can be isolated from pulmonary tuberculosis upon infection with mycobacterium tuberculosis the most common clinical pattern is termed as pulmonary tuberculosis it is seen in 90% of infected person in this pattern cd4 plus t cells are activated within 2 to 6 weeks and after infection infiltration of large number of activated macrophages can be seen the massive activation of macrophages that occurs within tubercles often result in concentrated release of lytic enzymes these enzymes destroy nearby healthy cells resulting in a circular region of necrotic tissue which eventually form a lesion with a cautious cheesy like a structure consistency and it is called tubercle as these calcious lesion heal they become calcified and readily available on x-ray events during the infection bacteria invades the host bacteria get surrounded by the defensive cells and form a calcified nodule this itself is called as tubercle due to this lytic enzymes and macrophages are released and tissue begins to die this fused mass of cell is called as calcification necrosis this leads to the destruction of lungs and tissues and large cavities are formed inside the lung escape mechanism how the mycobacterium able to escape from all this the peptidoglycans present on the bacteria helps them to escape from immune system this secretes endotoxins which helps the cells to escape from the host action mycobacterium tuberculosis was ineffective from antibiotics this is the immune response of the host see myto mycobacterium tuberculosis once that invades the tissue phagocytic cells engulf them and process of phagocytosis takes place second is intracellular proliferation in intracellular proliferation the host cell secretes many type of immune cells and thus interleukins as a result interleukins are formed with the help of th cells and cd4 plus cells here again the cell lysis of mycobacteria spread occurs and this result in chronic infection that is lcpl immune response of host innate response is brought up by phagocytosis and complement activation and lysis acquired immune response is exhibited by cell mediated immune response in which peptide fragment of mycobacterium is again recognized by antigen presenting cells which are recognized by th cells and these cells activates cytotoxic cells and release cytokines interference leukins and tumor necrosis factor disease and control treatment for diagnosis of tuberculosis x-ray imaging can be done and we can see the nodules over there for control and treatment we know very well that bcg vaccines were given to us and these vaccines help us to prevent 
or to prepare ourselves against mycobacterium tuberculosis. If then also the infection occurs, drugs like streptomycin, rifampicin can be given for the treatment as drug therapy and this should be continued for 9 months. Here are two types of tests or diagnostic tests which we can do if the infection occurs. First is microscopic test, second is culture test, third is molecular nucleic acid techniques, fourth is antigen detection test, fifth is phage based assay, sixth is liquid chromatographic test. These are all direct tests. Indirect test can be done as tuberculin screen test, interferon gamma assays, serological tested. Next is immune response to fungi. In this we study about aspergillosis. As the name suggests, it is caused by fungi aspergillus. The common type of Aspergillus species that cause infection are Aspergillus fumigans, Aspergillus flavus, Aspergillus teres, and Aspergillus needlands. What is Aspergillosis and types of Aspergillosis infections? Aspergillosis is basically an infection or allergic reaction caused by aspergillus fungus types of aspergillosis they can be of following types for like allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis in this allergic response can be seen in response to colonization of respiratory system with, with aspergillus fungus most common in asthma and cystic fibrosis patients. Invasive aspergillosis, it is an infection affecting patients with weakened immune systems or which are undergoing chemotherapy or suffering from other conditions like leukemia, cancer or AIDS. Cutaneous aspergillosis, it is an infection by fungus of a skin. The infection may be result from an open wound or may have spread from different parts of the body to the skin. Next is simple aspergilloma. This is a morphological appearance of fungus ball which occurs in a pre-existing cavity due to disease like tuberculosis. Chronic pulmonary aspergillosis. It is a very uncommon and slowly progressing destructive lung disease. It includes conditions like chronic cavitary pulmonary aspergillosis, chronic necrotizing, chronic fibrosing pulmonary aspergillosis. Allergic fungal sinusitis. It is a common type of fungal infection in the sinuses. The infecting fungi cause allergic reaction which result in thick fungal debris and ultimately leads to the blockage of sinus. These are the some symptoms of aspergillosis. Many of the times pain in chest, visual di vision difficulties, headaches, blood in urine, anoxia, blood in sputum, pneumonia like symptoms. How can we diagnose aspergillosis? We can diagnose it by imaging test, bronchoscopy or biopsy, skin prick test, galactomanine test, test for antibodies like immunoglobulin E and immunoglobulin G and sputum test. What is the response of host? 
when tuberculosis occurs sorry when aspergillosis occurs aspergillus fumigans first the pathogen recognition by prp cells phagocytosis occurs activation of intracellular signaling cascades induction of inflammatory responses activation of adaptive responses which ultimately leads to for proliferation and production of t helper cells treatment is oral itraconazole it is an antifungal drug available as a capsule to stabilize clinical and radiolog radiological manifestation variconazole and damb that is deoxycholate amphotericin b it is also a antifungal drug prosaconazole drug which is similar to itraconazole it helps in prevention of invasive aspergillosis especially in the patient which have low wbc count echinocandines these are the special novel class of semi synthetic antifungal drug next is immune response to virus in this we study about hiv or aids as we all know hiv causes acquired immunodeficiency syndrome which is first described in 1981 hiv1 is isolated in 1984 and hiv2 is isolated in 1986 in 1984 this virus was isolated by gallo and co-workers from national institute of health in us it belongs to a lentivirus subfamily of retroviridae it is enveloped rna virus have a size of 120 nm in diameter it was first identified by us peoples in 1981 and especially in homosexuals in 1983 a french investigator named lympha dinopathy named it lympha dinopathy associated virus or lap they named it human t cell lymphotrophic virus or stlv3 the basic two types which we already discussed is hiv1 and hiv2 what is the source of infection of hiv virus has been found in greatest concentration in blood and semen and also in cerebrospinal fluids a very low concentration as compared to above one has been detected in tear saliva or breast milk even though in urine cervical and vaginal secretion it is it has been found till date only blood and semen semen has been conclusively shown to transmit the virus causes of infection transmitted by patients it can be transmitted during intercourse through blood transfusion mother to fetus through placenta tissue transplantation use of unsterile syringe and needles intravenous drug breastfeeding of infected mothers pathogenesis of hiv infection Here's pathogenesis. How it occurs? HIV virus infected CD4 cells. Uncoating and reverse transcription occurs. Proviral DNA enters the cell. Budding of virus particles and cytopathic phase. Factors that can affect HIV infections. So, in host. mostly in cases of p 
pupils among 20 to 49 which are sexually active can be prone to HIV infections. In Africa, females are more infected by males. In North America, Europe and Australia, about 51% of cases are homosexual or bisexual ones. Another data is in Nepal, it occurs in every, every 2 is to 1 person. Risk groups for HIV infection Health workers, laborers, migrants, transport workers, partners of the migrants, street children, military, police or sex workers are the major risk groups of HIV infection. Here is the life cycle of HIV. See how it enters the cell. Firstly, the free virus get attached to the cell, binding and fusion occurs, virus penetrates the cell and empty it contents inside it, reverse transcription occurs and integration of viral DNA with cells own DNA occurs, transcription of viral DNA proceeds and proteins of long chain are made. These viral proteins then come together and assemblize it themselves to make a coat or viral particle. Then budding of immature viruses happens within the cell membrane. The protease enzyme starts processing the proteins in the newly forming viruses. Immature viruses breaks free of the infected cells. Maturation occurs when the protease enzyme finishes cutting HIV protein chains into individual proteins. These combine and make new working viruses. Phases of HIV infection. There are three phases of HIV infection. In first phase, after infection, it occurs between 3 to 12 weeks. It is an acute HIV syndrome in which a patient can feel sore throat, fever, skin rash, meningitis. Next is middle chronic phase. It occurs in between 10 to 12 years. Here the competition between HIV and host systems mainly occurs. Patients are mild, are having mild symptoms or maybe asymptomatic. Third phase of infection is full blown AIDS. Here severe immunosuppression occurs. There is drop of CD4 cells can be observed. How do then HIV escapes from our immune system? As we know, HIV is host specific and targets only T helper cells. The antigen is in the form of glycoprotein and it shows inverse variation. The variation can be observed from week to week or month to month. Symptoms Scratchy throat, headache, red spots or sores, diarrhea, thickened nails, joint pain, sore muscle or dry cough. These are some common symptoms which can lead to the severe complications like malignancy, nervous system, neuropathy, gastrointestinal tract, diarrhea, through endocrine systems, vitamin D deficiency, diabetes, thyroid, hypogonadism, hyperlipidemia, lactic acidosis, 
pulmonary hypertension vascular diseases renal insufficiency osteoporosis fractures and myopathy these are some complications and symptoms which we observe during hiv infection how then immune response occurs immune response occurs in two types humoral and cell mediated humoral in humoral response the glycoproteins of virus binds with cd4 receptor cells of th and enters in in it as hiv produces variety of glycoproteins as the newest one are not not recognized by the existing antibodies they escape through the attack of antibodies in cell mediated response glycoproteins of hiv binds with the cd4 receptor of th cells this activates tc cells and these tc cells proliferate and kill infected th cells due to this event th cell counts continuously decreases and it compromises the immune system types of test for hiv infection there are mainly four type of hiv test blood test home sampling screening and point of care test blood test when a sample of blood is taken to, for laboratory testing it can take from a day to number of days to tell you that you are hiv positive or negative point of care test here the saliva from your mouth is taken and a spot of blood from the finger these are readily available test and results are given within few minutes home sampling kits these home sampling or home testing kits are basically licensed for sale in south africa these are self test available and can be easily done and report can be easily interpreted screening for hiv in pregnancy all women who are pregnant are offered a blood test to check that if they have hiv as a part of routine natal screening because if untreated the pregnant woman can get this disease transfer to the baby lab diagnostic test direct test or elisa recombinant dna techniques or pcr techniques viral isolation in culture indirect methods are cd4 count lymphopenia lymph node biopsy treatment drug named azodo thymidine is given for prevention of ri- viral replication inactivation of reverse transcriptase enzyme can be done by drugs like soramen and ribavirin grafting of bone marrow can be done combination therapy is nowadays given to patients in which al721 which is a mixture of act- active lipids made from yolks of hen hen's egg is given to patients stimulation of immune system by injecting interleukin 2 and gamma interferon can also be given as treatment another treatment is art or anti retroviral therapy in this nucleoside reverse transcriptase in inhibitors are given nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors non nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors 
protease inhibitors these all are given according to the patient's condition thank you for listening next we do